Man, you must think of your struggles as an adventure. You must think of your trauma that you've endured as lessons. In general, people must understand that the proclivity to victimize oneself and to tell the story to oneself about how they have been wronged in the past is wrong. Now, there are likely people that have wronged you, and I'm not negating that. What I'm saying is that you must think of yourself as a stronger individual due to these past experiences. One thing it's clear to me in the modern dating world is that I finally realized over the past, I would say probably a few months more specifically, that I can free myself from the bonds of traditional values and at least tradi traditional principles, I should say, not traditional values, tra traditional principles, and free myself from modern-day promiscuity proclivities and presumptions. Now, what do I mean by freeing myself from these things? What I mean is that I will not play traditional games or I will not participate in roles of tradition with women that are not traditional. Meaning, if a woman is not a virgin, if she has tattoos, if she has addictive personalities, or addictive, an addictive personality type, She's addicted to many different kinds of things. She drinks cons consecutively and inconspicuously smokes or any kind of thing like that. She is not cooperative. She's not friendly. She's loud. She doesn't know how to cook or clean. She doesn't know any masculine, positive role models in her life. Then quite frankly, I don't see any reason to be traditional with this kind of woman. And I'm not saying that these women are unworthy to be loved. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that Men, you do not have to put these women that are not traditional on the pedestal in which they do want to be pedestalized in traditional society. It doesn't matter anymore anyway. Because these women that are only thinking of themselves as a sexualized object and yet still want you to be treating them as something other than that, it's, it's going to only hurt you in the long run, and it's not going to help society in any way, shape, or form. Women that are encouraged to leave husbands plus daddy issues equals a failed society. This is my conclusion in most modern day times because a lot of the times in modern families women either initiate divorce 70 to 80 percent of the time and they end up the family ends up divorced or there's no father in the home anyway so for me at this time I'm looking at the the numbers and I'm thinking about dating as not necessarily a numbers game, but a game of principle and values. 
So when I say I freed myself from the principles of tradition, what I'm saying is that, yes, I absolutely think that you can sleep with concubines as a man. And I'm not encouraging you to do so. I'm just saying that I think you can. I don't think it's considered fornication at all. Because basically what a concubine is, is not a full-time wife. And the way that you have to think about a concubine, and, and, and this is another thing that I would say as well, is that if you are just up front with these women about it, you can be as well. Because women that are not virgins, <laughs> I guarantee you, will have, even if they are virgins, but especially so if they're not virgins, they are going to have multiple women, I'm sorry, multiple men, maybe women too, who knows in the society that we live in, but they're going to have multiple men circling them in their orbit as well. Now, basically, you do not want to be in that orbit for women. You want them to be in your orbit for a man. And I'm not saying that this as a power thing. I'm not saying this as a control thing. I'm saying this as a, a genuine understanding of the dynamics of attraction between men and women. Women must respect the man in order to be in any kind of intimate relationship with him at all. Men don't really have to respect women in order for them to just get aroused. Right? So so the thing is is that for for women to respect you as a man is going to be far more important. And and this is something that I don't think women understand a lot is that men would rather have respect than love and women vice versa. But men, you should also watch out for the love scammers. That's what I call them anyway. The love scammers are the ones that love bomb. They're likely high narcissistic traits. They're likely high, highly incompatible with many different kinds of people. And the thing is, is that if, if they know lots and lots and lots of people, the chances of them actually being close with any of those people is maybe one percent if that in my experience the people that have the most friends are also the ones that have really no friends at all they really have no people that are in their corner the people that i know that have been the most authentic have very few people in their circle and the reason for that is because they're very selective and they like to be selective. Why wouldn't you want to be selective with the people that you involve in your life if you have things going for you and if you have a future and if you are progressive in your thinking and you're progressive in your thought process and critical an analysis of life? Now, it should also be said that I'm not saying that you shouldn't get married I'm not saying that you shouldn't strive for a loving, consensual relationship. That's not what I'm saying at all. I think all relationships should be consensual. And I also think that it is your sacred duty as a man to provide and protect for the women in your life that are showing that they are more than... more than promiscuous purposes the women that are capable of saying yo yo man okay obviously they're not going to say yo but you get the point <laughs> they're saying yo I have something worthwhile in my life that is not regarded and 
something that is not regarded as pure, purely promiscuity and purely promiscuous purposes. I have things in my life that I can do that set me apart. And this is another thing that you want to want to look for in men and women is people that are set apart. Any woman that is trying to be super mysterious with you is trying to hide something. This is something I learned the hard way. I thought it was cool. I thought it was sexy. I thought it was all this kinds of thing when this woman that I knew from a couple years ago, three years ago, when I actually started to, it was almost an emotional, I wouldn't say it's an affair of sorts, but it was an emotional love affair, you could say. Nothing actually happened physically, but it was very, it was a very an emotional connection-based relationship, so I thought. And I thought that the mystery that was involved in the courting process was just so amazing and so, like, the mystique of it was so cool. But really, mis- women are not mysterious. Most women are the same in their kinds of behaviors and thought patterns. They base their actions on emotion 90% of the time. <laughs> like, there's just no other way around it. And almost always, women will try to... I know I might trigger some women on this, so be prepared. But when women feel like they're an exception to the general rule of something, they want to point out why there's exceptions. Because they don't like the unflattering perception of whatever it is that is grouped in with women. So they want to say, well, not all women are like that. I know not all women are like that. <laughs> I know not not all men are like that either. Like, I may not like the fact that a lot of violence in the world is caused by men. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to sit here and say, well, not all men, because I'm I'm a very, very peaceful, peaceful person. I don't want to hurt anybody. I am not a dog. Please. No, I'm not going to say that shit. That's how you sound, women. Just so you know. When you try to make exceptions for the rules. On why, well, not all women are like that. It's like, well, I know. (laughs) We live in a general... A, a genera, genera, ugh. generality-based world. That's what I was trying to say. A generality-based world. And so, the key is, I think, in this understanding of what it means to be traditional. Because a lot. this is another thing I've, I've noticed, is that some women that are not traditional think they're traditional. But yet they just want the benefits that come with the tradition. That's all it is. And so it's so funny to me when this happens. And and it's so funny when it happens and it gets called out. And then like things start to shift. In, in the dynamic of the behavior, which is okay. Like if the, if the behavior is changing in a more positive direction, that's exactly what's needed in society. We've got a lot of cleaning up to do. We've got a lot of understanding what it really means to be in the, the new modern dating marketplace and the sexual marketplace in general. 
I wish I knew more about this when I was younger. But no, I was told to pedestalize women. I was told to get them flowers on the first date. Don't fucking do that, men. Don't fucking do that. A, a true, a, a woman will truly be happy if she likes you, if she really likes you, would be very, very pleased to just go to the park or go for a walk or go to the lake and feed the ducks. Something, something, something simple for the first date. Get a coffee. Something simple. It doesn't have to be extravagant. And any woman that wants it to be extravagant on the first date is likely going to be a headache down the road. And you don't have to... You don't have to simp for these women that are not traditional anyway. Like, there's no... Actually, for any woman, but specifically modern modern women that are... All of the attributes that I mentioned earlier, the tattoos, they're uncooperative. They try to dictate the conversation. They try to put you in their orbit. No, that's not how things work here. The tattoos, yeah, if she has tattoos that are like all over, what kind of statement do you think she's making? Now, I'm not saying you can't have like one or two tattoos. Like if you have a tattoo in a specific place, like under your breast or something like I don't know just some place that it's not clearly visible and maybe it means something great but again in my experience women that are that have tattoos are not not empathetic creatures in any way shape or form so and they often have a lot of trauma that comes with them And so, yes, women are encouraged to leave their husbands based off of the the laws that are in place right now. Like, women get rewarded for breaking the contract of marriage vows. They get rewarded for that. And it may not be overt in the understanding of it, but it's definitely covertly, subconsciously implanted into the society in the West that women are encouraged to leave husbands. And then the whole daddy issues thing, if, if a woman has daddy issues, she's going to take a lot of healing in order for there to be any kind of trust with men again. And it's often going to be the case that a truly masculine man that is assertive will spark an array of emotions in women that are dealing with daddy issues that have not dealt with them and that are not in the process of dealing them dealing with them the reason being is because they they're not used to a masculine man and they often view masculinity as a threat which i think is really the subconscious root of all the patriarchy thing I think it's really just the fear of daddy issues, trauma, disguised as something that it isn't. So that's my theory anyway. I don't know that's for sure, but that's my that's what I can see. That's what's been, been revealed to me through God. And so really, men, this is a message of just encouraging you to really analyze your situation and to not be afraid to put yourself first. That was something that I had to learn the hard way a long time ago. I always put somebody else before me. And really what you create as a society, when you tell men to always put other people before yourself, You create a lot of beta males. And I know that sounds cringe, but that's really what it is. As a man, you are either a alpha or you are a beta. And as a woman, you are either a housewife or you are a hoe. 
that's just the way it goes. It is what it is. So, with that being said, I hope this message was informative, insightful, and useful. And I think I'm going to go for a little walk after this. It's a pretty nice day out. First nice day for a while. So, it's going to get some sunshine. Go for a little jog. Get to the gym. And just have a really blessed night. So, We'll see you uh we'll see you next time. Peace be with you.